So you're actually sure of the income. So it makes the people who lend money to you very happy, and that's what the sports leagues have to a degree become, particularly the NFL and Major League Baseball, they become predatory agencies. They've allowed their owners to build stadiums and make money, and these revenue streams, these contractually obligated revenue streams are things that pay off the debt on that and make those stadiums cash producers better than the franchises are. So who's the most important fan in sports? It's not a fan now, it's a corporate client. And I put FedEx up here, not because I, it's a plug, they didn't pay for this little slot, but FedEx is my example. Tell me a little bit about FedEx marketing. FedEx markets the bowl series, right? They have a, it's a FedEx Orange Bowl. So they do college football. They have the stadium where the Washington Redskins play, FedEx Field. There's two FedEx movements into sports. Anybody a golf fan? What did FedEx just sponsor in golf? FedEx Cup. They sponsored the FedEx Cup, the, the now the World Series Championship of Golf. So FedEx has got three different sports properties. What does Michael Vick do to FedEx potentially? Does he take, does he say to you that maybe I don't want to be around the NFL? What does 53 arrests say to FedEx? Oh, you know, I can't really do this because most of the people who ship on FedEx are probably not prisoners. <laughs> you know, unless FedEx has the good Department like, of Corrections contract for mail, they're probably thinking, you know, I really want corporate clients. Golf over here now is clean, or something else is clean. So essentially what you're doing with FedEx, if you're a sports league or a team or an entity, is you're competing for a percentage of their marketing dollar, not their undying passion. And that's the problem when you get into sports fan. That's the crisis we've hit. We have a crisis with, of confidence in fans because the current situation really has said to us, Maybe we really can't like the things we like. Maybe there aren't people that are admirable in the way that we found them to be admirable. I, I wrote an article not long ago, where have you gone, Bill Bradley? Rhodes Scholar, U.S. Senator, basketball hero. The person that my mother wanted me to grow up and be like. I gotta tell her, if my mom were around, I'm not as good as him at anything. <laughs> but he was the guy that I wanted to emulate. Who's the professional athlete you want to emulate today off the court or off the field? That's a crisis too. We're not creating new fans. But we're also now messing up our own advertising revenue in the process. So sports probably is in crisis. And it probably got as bad this summer as it could get. It's not looking to get better anytime soon. And this is part of the problem because how do you get a client back? How do you get a client back when you've lost them? When they've determined that you're not revenue friendly to them or you're not image friendly to them? How do you fix your image? How do you fix your value structure if you lose them? And I think that's a relevant question for everybody who's going to have clients in their lives. You know, do you have to do that? I, I have to take a quick aside. The boxer getting hit in the head with me was a client. My one boxing client ever, he tried to move all three tent poles of contractual negotiation in the same meeting. Three tent poles that I kind of talk about when I talk about contract negotiation are duration, obligation, and price. He was moving them around in the same conversation. That's the last time I worked with a guy who gets hit, hit in the head for a living. <laughs> and I always put that picture up. It's a good picture just because he's getting the hit in the head here. Uh, <laughs> but it redefined, it redefined for me, it redefined for me, and I, I didn't think about this. I think Governor Brewer even said it once in a class. The old theory of contractual interpretation was contracts were the things that we lived up to. They were our bond. They were ethical. What do contracts represent, particularly in sports today? And I realized in that negotiation that I had sort of come to that stage, they represented an economic opportunity, a statement of purpose. And we were joking last night at dinner, if I were doing Nick Saban's contract, I don't think it would be a contract, it would be 17 weekly retention bonuses. <laughs> and then maybe an off-season retention bonus to like start the next season. And that's what the world has come to. We are now, we are now in a world of free agency in, 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 broad, in broad perspective. And that creates challenges for us as lawyers. It creates ethical challenges for us as lawyers to think about what does, what does the contract we write mean? And how do we give purpose and intensity to that? And ultimately, how do we advise our clients as to what they, what they do and how do, we, how do we treat it? I mean, I remember walking at a meeting with this boxer and the second of his two fights, this two fight contract that he was doing for $50,000, which was a pretty good contract uh, for a guy who hadn't really made a lot of money, uh, 
was to fight for the championship. If he won, the, if he won his first fight, which was to be the, a title challenge, his second fight was to be a title defense. And I even like said to him, well, you know, if you win the title, we'll just breach the contract. We'll buy out of it somehow. I can get you a better deal. Now, he was a little confused because he was being offered 50000 and he was still upset over trying to get thirty five from somebody else. So, again, nothing quite works for him. And you'll, you'll dig some dry holes in your business. But I think this is a funny story only from the perspective of it, it's a great ethical opportunity. It's a great check for you as a practitioner. Is, is it... Is our contracts inviolate or are contracts short statements of what the circumstances are until something better comes along? And how will they change as we move on down the road? Now to me. Vic and me and my 15 minutes of fame. A year ago, I got interviewed by Reuters and they asked me what were the biggest challenges of facing Roger Goodell when he took office.